We have some news from BMW and I think this is more important than we might think because this is the new BMW Concept Skytop. They are hopefully going to make this into a limited production run of 50 to 100 units. But do you notice something different when you look at this design? To me, this is going back to a classic confident BMW design that I've been missing for the last decade or so. I honestly think this is the most important BMW when it comes to design in the last decade because it looks so classic. It's based on the M8 competition, which you can kind of see that it is. And I think that has to do with uh, some of this classic proportions that we have in this car. So we're going to have a look at this from the sketches to the production version. I'm going to show you exactly what I think about this design. There are a couple of details here that I'm not a huge fan of, that we're going to have to work around a little bit, and Rosie is very eager to get started. So before we do that, <laughs> let's have a look at this article from Car and Driver. I'm going to link this down below. So BMW reveals the concept Skytop, a sleek two-seater based on the 8 Series. With a bit of luck, the Bavarian Motor Works will build 50 units of this 8 Series ba uh, based Targa Top crowd stopper and sell them at half a million dollars a piece. If it's going to be a limited production, uh, car, uh, half a million dollars seems like pretty, I guess, reasonable. It's a lot of money, specifically since you have the, the classic 8 Series interior, which to me is worth half a million dollars to bring that back into modern BMWs. More on that when we jump into Photoshop. Only a few days earlier in Monte Carlo, Mercedes showed the first of its Mythos cars, of which 250 pieces will be, starting, uh, will be made starting in 2025. And I haven't made a video on that car yet, but I do think I, I might have to do that because I have uh, a lot to say about that design. I probably will do a video on that here on the channel as well, talk about that design. The Skytop is intended to become a hand-built collector's item. If the board approves the proposal, the first of no more than 50 items, although some sources hinted at 100 units for this build should be completed late next year. The base price, as I said, is about $542,000, which car and driver says isn't unreasonable considering the M8 cab uh, donor car currently listed more than $207,000 before options. That is the base price of the M8 cab uh, convertible. Uh, none of the nine show cars presented at the shores of Lake Como from BMW in the past have made it into production. However, last year we had a Z4 shooting brake, which came very close to getting put into some sort of limited production uh, uh, setup. And in 2024, all the money is now on the Skytop, which was panned by Marcus Searing, which is going to shape future Alpina models. The basic proportions corresponds to the M8 cab. The Skytop has no rear seats though. In their place, we find a sturdy target top rollover protection element, which doubles as B pillar with integrated trademark Hofmeister kinks in this piece of bodywork. And I think it's a beautiful touch. I also like the overall greenhouse layout in this car with this brown bar at the top, rollover bar um, as well, looking nice. With the exception of the windshield and the doors. The bodywork is all new, but when I look at this door here, this does not look like uh, like an M, like an 8 series door. This looks to be also completely new, so I'm not entirely sure if I'm missing something here. Different door handles, different line, everything is different from a normal uh, 8 series. The wing, the double kidney grille is lit at night. Typical BMW these days to light up the, the kidneys in the front end. And I think this is one of these cars that actually suits to have a lit up front grille. Some cars of BMW, I don't think it's suitable, but in this case, it looks, it looks great. We also have ultra slim, high intensity four dot LED headlamps and L pattern taillights are nicely toned down variants of on a familiar theme. One gr graphic detail in the bodywork that I love about this car is the dividing full length stingray like center spine extending from the hood to the rear deck and transforms from bodywork into a chrome piece in the rear. It's, it's Stuff like that that makes this feel like a coach-built BMW that is actually worth half a million dollars. You still have the same 625 horsepower V8 that you find in the 8 series though. They could have maybe bumped that up a little bit, but at the same time, this doesn't feel like a supercar. It feels more like a Monte Carlo cruiser car, so 625 horsepower feels, in my opinion, pretty, pretty decent for, for this design. So look at this car here and look at this, the lines that we have. So we have a lot of uh, classic features coming back 
Now, I think BMW maybe are done. I hope so, at least, playing around with their crazy designs. Because if you look at them, I've talked about this so many times before. If you look at the entire BMW lineup, every single car has a different front end. It's no there's no red line, there's no design DNA for the brand at the moment. So going back to these classic lines that we have here in these beautiful sketches by the uh, BMW design team is exactly what I want to see. This line is a stunning line that sweeps from the front end all the way up in the back here and look at the, this chamfer that we have, these two chamfers that we have in the back with these very slim taillights looking fantastic and definitely recognizable now as a BMW again. It looks super clean, you can see some more sketches here, some details of the rear end with this chamfer up top looking great, super sharp, it feels like if you touch this you're gonna cut yourself and start bleeding in your finger. Looking at the side view here, there are a couple changes on the production version that I wanna change. In the side view, they mentioned it in the car and driver article as well. I'm gonna show you exactly what that is, but here you can clearly see uh, this line again. This swoops all the way up, creating this forward motion for this design. We have a muscle, a clearly defined, very sharp muscle over the rear axle. Same with the front axle. Instead of having this Italian style where you have a bubble over the front axle, in this case we're going back again to this more classic style of BMW, just having a straight line and a long sweeping hood from the, uh, from the start of the A-pillar down here into the front end graphics looking super clean and this is the spine line that I love of this new car. We have this center line that is chrome in the back and body colored in the front end and here you can clearly see these exotic muscles over the rear fenders how it bulges out like this beautifully done by the Merce uh, <laughs> BMW design team. Now looking at the real car here you can clearly see that it is sort of um, a, a more modernized BMW 8 series and there's nothing wrong with that because the BMW 8 series right now is the own I, I think it's the only BMW maybe the 3 series a little bit as well uh, the only BMW that on sale today that has classic BMW proportions or, or graphics. What I mean by that is we have no uh, bumper headlights, which is, seems to be in every other uh, BMW these days. Here, the headlights is in a classic position, right where we want them. We also have classic BMW wide kidneys, horizontally, not tall kidneys stretched out. Uh, vertically and this is creating this wider stance of the front end of the BMW giving it this face that shows that it will get you to wherever you need to go no matter what the conditions are outside. It has that confidence look to it that you just want to go in and drive this car. We also have a lot smoother intakes now. This is something we, we, we never see in BMWs these days. These smooth soft curvatures with clear radiuses in the corners of the of the key graphics down here. Just a stunning uh, transition from the designs that we have today which is all sharp and you have creases everywhere going like this in every single BMW which just looks messy, it doesn't look clean and elegant anymore. So I'm really glad to see the BMW is going back to this type of styling and I do hope this will spill over to the rest of the lineup. I love these hood vents. I do believe this is actually a functional vent so maybe air shoots out from here in through the kidneys and up through the uh, hot air extractors up top on the grill. Now looking at the side view here, it, th there's one detail here as I said they mentioned this in the article as well but let's start with the good things here. First of all we have a clear shoulder line even though it is a little bit broken, broken like we have in the uh, 4 series the M4 with two lines up here and then it goes into the zigzag shape coming back like this but it looks so much better than the 4 series here because I don't know it just has this clear uh, BMW elegance to it with soft smooth lines in combination with a couple of key sharp lines exactly what I want to see in BMWs. We also have a beautiful little chamfer here barely noticeable going up through this Hofmeister kink that is intact in the bodywork and it's not part of the full or, or, or the rooftop. These actually, the, this car actually has two uh, roof panels that you manually need to take off and I do love that BMW put the Hofmeister kink into the bodywork itself and not have that be part of the removable, removable piece because this means that even though you have the roof off you still have the key 
uh, DNA for BMW, the Hofmeister King intact, even if the roof is off. Not so sure about these wheels here, they look pretty elegant to me, but I want to have a little bit more opening and I want to see the rotor sitting behind these spokes that we have, that's just one detail. But here you can see this line that we saw in the sketches coming back in the, in the actual car here going into the rear end, into this beautiful rear end graphics, super clean and crisp, very subtle diffuser at the lower section. However, there's one detail here that I want to change and that is this lower section. I'm not sure why this corner sits so far forward and this corner also, if it feels like it's inverted, I want to switch these up and I want to have this line go sort of uh, from a thin point in the front end and then dip, start to dip down at this point into the rear end and also have a bit of a smoother transition here. So let's see if we can do something real quick and show you exactly what I mean. I'm not going to do a, a, a proper redesign here. I'm just going to play around with these graphics to show you uh, kind of my idea of what I want to see here. So a smoother line down here and not have it be so aggressive and so sharp because everything else in the bodywork here is soft. We have, a, as I said, a few key lines, but just having it something like this where you have a smooth transition from the, the indent and then coming out smoothly uh, into this lower section that reflects the, the sky and creates this lower section that has this lighter reflection to it at the bottom. Have it be a little bit more dynamic and here you can see the before and after. Not the cleanest redesign here, but I just want to show you the idea that I have for this lower section. I do think just having it be a little bit more soft and subtle looks better than having it be this harsh. It feels like a harsh graphic feature that doesn't fit the overall uh, design of the, of the car here. But that's what we get. So looking at the rear end, this is by far my favorite view of this car. Because again, the, the clean surfaces and designs of the BMW uh, from the past is coming back here to these, this rear end. Look at how beautiful this chamfer is here. We have a nice super sharp, almost like a Audi nail spoiler in the rear end that Audi calls it with these extremely thin tail lights, but they still have a little bit of dynamic to it because you see we have one small little LED at the bottom that stretches all the way to this point. Then we have another, a second LED up top here. So it creates this L shape that we're used to seeing from BMW, even though it's been squished to the maximum amount of thinness in the rear end, creating a very elegant and modern futuristic look in my opinion. And on top of that, this lower rear diffuser brings back again the elegance of BMW, round beautiful oval tailpipes, something I don't remember last time I saw oval tailpipes like this on a BMW. There's a lot of Audi style cues going on here. The RS Audi models always had these big oval tailpipes. This feels more Audi to me and so does this top piece up here with the Audi nail spoiler. But it's not a bad thing that BMW in interpreted the those features in their own way and applied it to this uh, open top concept. The key, de the key detail I love here is this big chamfer with the BMW logo going into the second chamfer creating a proper bumper and a clear separation between the bumper, the diffuser and the top graphics. Perfectly done in my opinion. This is what I want to see from BMW. Now moving on to the interior and again it, you look at this interior. This is from the 8 series and this looks so much better than the uh, iDrive 8 or 8.5 that we have right now with the two dual screens up top here. So this might be a um, you know a vision into what BMW wants to do bringing back a housing for the gauge cluster here F a lot of physical buttons here look at this how beautiful this is with the iDrive 7 compared to the uh, clinical sterile and cold integration of in uh, interiors as BMW have in the uh, BMW iDrive 8 systems. This looks 10 times better. I also like that we have the same color across the entire interior. Even the wheel here is brown. We have some crystal stuff going on here, which is something BMW has been doing in their 7 series and also in the 5 series also have a lot of crystal lighting going on in, in their interior. So overall, the thing is, some might say that this is just a, a last attempt on making something with the 8 series. But I don't think BMW would drop a almost like a halo concept like this in 2024 and uh, say that, that they are most likely going into a small limited, uh, limited production run 
and not have this show what direction BMW wants to go because BMW has always put their concept out and then they take a lot of inspiration from those concept cars as a lot of car companies do and apply that inspiration into their production car. So this to me is a hint that BMW might be going back to a more classic design, a BMW design with the clean graphics and the, the radiuses and the less chiseled, you know, origami style that we have right now in BMWs. And I also hope that they take inspiration from the old iDrive 7 system and start to go back into physical buttons, gauge cluster housings, and interiors like we have today in the BMW 8 series.